a working farm and working garden to spite people. The first thing is like, and how people, yeah, and people relating to each other. Yeah, yeah, and more and more it's about um, refining the people are just often lonely and that's a big, big, big thing these days. It's not, yes, there's unemployment, there's a lot of that still about, but now we find it's just people want things to do and, and to get out of the house and people to talk to. So it's this group working, what we always insist on in the garden project is that we work in groups because that's what it's about. It's about coming along and having a coffee break and a chat about what's been going on in your week. Or, and kind of what I was saying about having an activity to base that around is that just sitting, chatting, it's not the same as if you're busy reading or reading. Pitter pottering, the blethering that gets done is much, um, is I think does as much good as sitting, I don't know, in a psychiatrist's office or whatever. Sometimes I think it's that's, it's just that human interaction. People just want that, and I'm not suggesting that everybody can go and dig a great big tatty trench, or whatever. Just pitter pottering can be just enough. I think that's a quite good thing about gardening is it has lots of different levels. You can get really torn about it and fell a tree, or, but you can also just sit and read a bed or pick some strawberries. The fact that A, it's been going for a long time and I've been looking at part of it for a long time. And when you see people come back after a number of years, especially younger people who've come here, and they say, and they bring their kids, and they go, I remember coming here as a kid, and they can't wait to come back here and bring their own kids. And I think that's, that for me is, um, because I've been involved in lots of different levels on the committee and the board, to see that happening to the next generation of people is, I can't tell you how proud that makes me feel. I just, I, because there has been hard times, you've had to really kind of struggle, and, but to see it still going is, is great. And on a day-to-day -day basis, just seeing, like you can see all around, just people sitting about chatting, communicating, getting out and about. I suppose the fantasy of it is, is, that, is that it keeps going for another 30 years and that somehow that can happen. And that, I think, yes, you can mend things and build things and all the time, of course, you have to do that. You don't want people tripping up over things and you want facilities to be clean and nice. But it's having people to support people, if you know what I mean. So I'm kind of bigging myself up a little bit here, but it's paying for people like me to to run groups to support people, and yeah, and so that, that keeps on going. So this keeps on going for another 30 plus years. People, it's a place for people to meet, a local place for people to meet, part of their community. It's free because it would be a completely different place if it weren't free, and we we'll have different expectations, and they wouldn't feel it's part of the community. It would be a commercial. We'd all feel differently about it. We, over the years, that's been brought up. People have said, "Well, why don't you charge?" We said, "Because that's not what it's about. It has to. It has to remain free." And I think the other thing is that it has to remain a working farm, a working garden. It doesn't. It's not a petting corner. It's not a petting zoo. It is about farming. I think that's again one of the most unique things about it is this mad surreal farm, real working farm in the middle of the city. So it is this local, free, actual working farm, and it's a bit mad, but it works.